So Rastavakra continues, he says, Dharma in a Dharma, right and wrong, Dharma in a Dharma, uh, happiness and sorrow, these are the attributes of the mind, not yours. You are neither the doer nor the enjoyer and you are always free. Yeah. So the Astavakra is again separating the consciousness from what it is not, right? where the identification is happening. And this time he is pointing out that Dharma in a Dharma. Now Dharma in a Dharma is being said here in the sense of what is right and what is wrong. right? For example, in India it is considered non-violence is a good Dharma. Right? Non-violence, not harming other people is an alignment with the nature, is an alignment with the harmon harmony. Right? So that is considered as a dharma. And harming other people, killing other people, stealing other people's stuff and these kind of stuff used to call as a, a dharma on a very superficial level. Deeply to used to mean dharma means the laws. Right? But here I think it means more in terms of what is right, what is wrong. Yeah? What is to be done, what is not to be done in that definition. So dharma and a dharma these belongs to the mind. These are the attributes of the mind. What is right and what is wrong? These are the part of the mind, not yours. This is what Dastavakra is pointing out, right? And then he says happiness and sorrow is also the part of the mind, right? What the happiness and sorrow is, basically certain kind of thought and emotion feels uh, is what we call happy, right? Let's say I'm feeling excitement. I haven't met somebody from long time and they are coming and I'm feeling very much excited, right? So that kind of a state, inner state is what I'm calling happy. On the other hand, I know uh, I, 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 the exam I gave wasn't really good and the result is coming, right? Now I'm feeling fear, anxiety, whatever. So that experience we can call sorrow, right? That inner state. So different, different inner state, different combinations of thoughts and emotions is what we're calling happiness. And different con combination and thoughts and emotions is what we call sorrow, right? So this also belongs to the mind. These are the attributes of the mind, right? These different combinations and thoughts and emotions are basically what the mind is. Right. So here the Astavakra is pointing out, right? Right and wrong, happiness and sorrow, all these things belong to the mind, not from you. Right. So he's again separating another layer. Like don't entangle into this. You are experiencing all that, but this is not something that belongs to you. These are the attributes of the mind. Right. This happiness, sorrow, and this uh, what is right, what is wrong, all these sort of stuff. Right. And then he says, You are neither the doer nor the enjoyer, and you are the always free. Right. You are neither the doer nor the enjoyer. And again, Astavakra, what is he's doing is he's he's sort of detaching our identity from wherever we are stuck, right? From wherever we have identified ourselves, right? And with the doer, what doer means here is uh, the person who is acting, right? For example, I'm the creating, I'm creating the video. And for me, it feels very real, right? That I am creating the video. I am creating this video, right? It feels like that. It feels so real. And what Astavakra is saying is, again, because my identification is there with that doer. So Astavakra is saying is, you are not the doer. Separate yourself from the doer. And the same way is the enjoyer. But that is very difficult. And that is very sudden. And that is why something like Astavakra is considered to be read by people who have already had enough meditation practices and or somehow matured enough in their, you know, uh, inquiry or anything like that. Because these kind of beliefs will be very difficult for somebody who is just starting. If I'm not the doer, then why should I do anything, right? That is like superficially understanding something, superficially believing something, and which will be even more destructive, right? So that's why Astavakra is considered like, okay, you need to have enough maturity in your practices before you attempt Astavakra, right? Because he's very direct, right? So what he's saying, you're not the doer. You're not the one who's creating the video, right? And I have like a very clear sense that I'm the one who's creating the video, right? Who else is creating the video? And uh, what is Stavakra saying? You are not the one who is creating the video. So what is creating the video? There are certain processes and this is the part of the process. The cause and effect process is what, the cre what is creating the video. For example, let's say I breathe, right? It's not me who is breathing the breath, right? It's not me who is inhaling uh, the breath, right? It is the process itself, right? Which part I'm saying, I'm going to say I'm the inhaling and, you know, for example, I inhale the breath and then breath goes inside my... Uh, blood and the blood goes to you know my heart pumps and blood circulates in the different arteries and then it comes back and the co2 and then it exhales back what am i doing in this right this is a process this is a process that is happening right from taking the breath to circulating into entire blood to taking back the co2 and then 
you know, exhaling. This is a complete process, right? And the same way the Stavakra is saying, this doing is not what you are. This doing is basically is the process, right? It is a process of cause and effect. It's the same kind of a process and the level of the mind, right? Just like our body has a heart, our body has a lung. In the same way, mind has a different function. And one of the function is the doer, right? And how does it do it? How do I, then how, then how am I creating this video? Like how this video is being created then, right? If I'm, if I am not the created, the, if I'm not creating the video, then how this video is being created, right? And this is, again, this is so interesting, this is subtle that, you know, this video is basically being created based on the process of cause and effect, right? It is being created because at some point I consume some information that, you know, other people are creating the video, maybe I consume some information from the book, then I have a, you know, uh, some desire to teach and all these different variables combined together creates a desire to create a video and that desire is being manifested as an action, right? But if you notice, this is not just like somebody decided to create a video and you are creating the video. No, it's a part of the process, right? Everything that we are, you know, inhaling from the, uh, our surrounding, our culture or different, different stimulus that we are getting, based on that stimulus goes inside the mind. There's a process inside the mind from where the desire comes up and the desire becomes action, right? Again, from outside things comes and then, you know, there is a process inside our mind which gets cling and resist to something that gets stuck into our system based on these different things that we have accumulated, some desire comes and that desire becomes a manifestation, right? A process. It's a process like that, right? Uh, subtle, very subtle. But what Astavakra is saying, you are not the one who's creating the video, right? You are not the doer, right? You are not the doer. It is being created as a part of the process of the mind, right? So that is what uh, is you are not the doer. And our identity is very, very strongly attached to the doer, right? It feels, there's nothing more real that feels as compared to, you know, I am the one who is doing all these things, right? This feels so real. This is where the identity really, really stuck, right? That I am the one who is creating all this. I am the one who is doing this, right? So that is the doer. Enjoyer is, uh, for example, I am the one who is creating the video. Uh, then let's say if somebody gives a good comment, somebody puts a bad comment, whatever the comment I'm getting, based on that, I'm going to experience certain emotions, right? That is the enjoy, right? Enjoyer is, he's not doing, but he's, you know, enjoying the fruits of the doing <laughs> yeah so that is the enjoyer karta and bhokta so that is what the astavakra is saying you are neither the doer nor the enjoyer this is the part of the process process of the mind process of your inner state you are not doing it as a consciousness has nothing to do with this consciousness is separate from this right again he's separating where our identity is stuck because this is all about the self-realization this is all where he's you know pointing out what you are not what you are what you are not what you are right so that we can separate from what we are not and we can understand what exactly we are yeah so you are not the doer you are not the enjoyer and you are always free right again he separated these two things that this uh, adharma dharma right and wrong and this happiness sorrow this doing and enjoying all these things are the attributes of the mind so you separate yourself from that and then what is left is the consciousness and the consciousness is always free right consciousness is has nothing to do with all these things from the, the way Astavakra is pointing out here, because the Raja Janak asked this thing, right? The devotee asked this thing, how can I be liberated and detached? And the Astavakra is saying this, that you are by nature is free, you are by nature is liberated and you are by nature is detached. It is the wrong identification to different processes is what is creating this bondage, or what is creating uh, these illusions, right? So you are always free, uh, you are ever free.